I've been involved in reporting on the AI space in some way since 2021, and it always amazes me how far we've come. This week is no exception. MCP upgrades, more new protocols, and Codex is getting another big upgrade. I'm your host, tech journalist and AI consultant Harry Verity. Stick with me until the end, and you'll be in for a treat as we look at some of the creative and colourful ways the internet has been using Nano Banana with the video models for advertising. Let's begin then by talking about OpenAI's upgrade to Codex. Codex is a version of OpenAI's models that has been specifically trained for coding, and it's been around for a while, but it's previously operated on O3 architecture, and now, this week, it's been upgraded to GPT-5. If you've not used it before, it's designed to be more hands-off than Claude Code, and it can run in your IDE or in Terminal, executing commands for you at hours at a time. It could do code refactoring, and it can also do smaller tasks as well as longer tasks. So according to the decoder, this model adjusts its compute time depending on task difficulty, using fewer tokens than GPT-5 on simple tasks and more on harder ones. And if you think about it, this fits in with the updates OpenAI brought into GPT-5 with their open router. We covered this story a few weeks ago, but you may remember that the GPT-5 was initially beset with a whole bunch of bugs and users complaining. They felt that the model was actually giving them worse answers than GPT-4. So these were all teething problems that have, I think, started to be ironed out. Now, one of the biggest criticisms that I hear from my developer network is that the sheer amount of tokens that Claude Code can burn through. Now, of course, you know exactly what I'm going to say. If you want unlimited use and you don't want to have to worry about tokens at all, you can, of course, spin up one of the open source models on our everywhere inference, such as GPT OSS. You can do that in just three clicks, though, of course, you've got to factor in server rental costs as well. To me, this upgrade seems like a smart move, but it does speak to how the AI labs are increasingly looking to make their models just more efficient rather than just blindly spending more on compute. GPUs are so heavily in demand at the moment, and I don't think that that's going to slow down, but it is true that the economics of AI models are still far from certain. To get started with Codex, simply run this command line in your terminal. You may need to ensure you have the right permissions first. It's really quite powerful, and what I liked is that it gives you an idea of how much context you currently have left. I just think it's so much smarter at getting stuff done, and it's more aware when it's making a mistake. Let's have a quick listen to what the engineers at OpenAI have to say about this one, though, as, of course, they appeared on the OpenAI podcast this week to discuss the incredible advances we've seen in the coding models. Big. And I remember at some point we were talking about these aspirational goals of imagine if you could have a language model that would write a thousand lines of coherent <laughs> code, right? That was like a big goal for us. And the thing that's kind of wild is that that goal has come and passed. And I think that we don't think twice about it, right? I think that while you're developing this technology, you really just see... So I want to stick with OpenAI for a minute. They've finally taken the leap of faith this week and rolled out MCP servers. So to activate them, you have to activate their new developer mode. And it comes with a lot of warnings that this feature is, of course, still experimental. Now, this was actually announced quite a while ago. And of course, MCP servers first dropped last year in November. But the fact they were pioneered by Anthropic and OpenAI have adopted them shows that this is now the new standard for connecting with tools. I think this is much like how now no one questions the consensus around HTTP or SMTP in email, I think MCP is the standard for tools with AI. One of the MCPs I think is particularly impressive is Notion. I also love the Instantly MCP server for sending cold emails. And of course, if you're able to use MCP servers with OpenAI's new open source model, then I would jump on that as well. But MCP servers have become more popular over the last few months, and they are becoming more vulnerable. Let's jump over to LinkedIn, where Ito Mayamura, a computer science grad at the University of Oxford, has put out this really great post exposing some of the massive vulnerabilities in MCPs. Let's break this down and how it works. So the attacker actually sends out a calendar invite with a jailbreak prompt in it to the victim, just to their email. And now there's actually no need for the victim to accept the invite. It waits for the user to ask ChatGPT to help prepare their day by looking at their calendar. And ChatGPT reads that jailbroken calendar invite. And then of course it ingests that as a prompt and now ChatGPT is hijacked by the attacker and it will act on the attacker's commands. It searches your private emails and it sends the data to the attacker's email. 
Now this is all pretty crazy and of course it speaks to why locking down your models on the cloud and having proper compliance is super important of course you can do that with gcore now one way we might mitigate this is by using properly vetted mcp servers and so far it has been a bit like the wild west out there it's fair to say and that comes with pros and cons and instead of using the official notion mcp server i've been using an unofficial light one which i think is amazing but obviously that comes with risks and anthropic have led the way here and they've just launched an official mcp registry so to be approved you will need to pass vetting and they also have a zero tolerance policy for spam or malicious injections of course so anthropic say it's going to provide a primary source of truth and this will help expand server reach and help clients find servers more easily across the mcp server ecosystem and i have to agree to be honest i'm a big fan of mcp servers and i think this is exactly what we need it's not only going to increase security it's also going to improve discoverability as well you know a lot of companies don't even realize that you can create an MCP from their API and that it can provide such value to their customers. Staying with protocols then, Google are weighing in on the protocol side of things. They've come up with a new agents payment protocol called AP2. I really, I think this is the future. Let's talk about this. So would you trust AI with your finances? Well, if you're a larger organization and you need to book flights and hotels at scale for the best price, and you've also got to deal with the added complexity of air miles, this is a time consuming admin task. Indeed, it might even be someone's full time job. So you can see why people People will be quick to delegate this off to AI models and with reasoning models we're not far off from that so all of this is super exciting and I think this is the building blocks of AI to architecture being built right in front of us Google are being very smart here and they recognize that even if this technology doesn't exactly work at a foolproof level right now it certainly will do in the next 12 months and so the architecture to make sure secure payments can be handled by AI agents is there from the get-go I want to end them with a little bit of a treat so you may have seen a recent episode on nano banana well I want to showcase some of the amazing ways that it's actually transforming advertising combined with the video models it's really allowing small businesses to make engaging videos that would have taken thousands to make previously and to be honest some of them might not even be possible let's take a look at this really cool video so in this video elvis presley has been brought back to life and he's dancing outside of the revolver coffee shop which is actually one of my favorite coffee shops and he's entertaining the guests inside and he was built using banana and cling 2.1 what's crazy is that when i've actually drunk that v60 filter coffee that you see in the video it's served in those exact glass pots even the drinks inside the fridge in the outdoor area are accurate let's also look at vo3 so Vinny of next level narratives has brought back the magic of the coliseum as part of a product advertisement in hindi he told me he came up with a hundred images on a storyboard from mid that he created from mid journey he then selected the best ones and he strung them all together with vo3 if you think about how much it would have cost to make this in the past how many actors you would have had to rent it and how you would have had to bring the coliseum back to life you would have had to recreate it something the budget for an advertisement like that would have been hundreds of thousands of dollars and it would be hard to sign off on something like that without a lot of input nowadays one person who has that creative mind can go away and create that for a brand and work with them and i think that's super exciting i think we're going to see more advertisements like that as we go forward i think this has been an interesting week in ai and i loved what greg brockman had to say in his uh, interview on the open ai uh, podcast he was reminiscing about some of the coding models and how when he started out one of the big goals was to get a coding model to be able to write a thousand lines of code and that, that would be a big achievement and these days we have surpassed that goal 10x and we don't really even think about it and the upgrade to to codex has not made huge headlines in the way that gpt5 did when it came out but i still think that it is an amazing huge upgrade and the fact that it's not getting reported in a huge way doesn't mean that it's not significant and i think it's super cool that we are sort of taking this for granted and the fact that we can just literally build ai apps we can queue up tasks for hours and hours and hours and on end i just think that's super cool i'm super curious to hear your thoughts on the new upgrade to the codex model how does it compare to core code and how does it compare to the o3 version of codex are you reminiscing for it already and want it back or are you seeing marginal improvement goals let me know in the comments i'm super curious to hear and if you've watched this far don't forget to give the video a nice thumbs up a like and also to subscribe to the channel as well so that you get notified every time we put a new video out all right well thank you so much for watching and i'm sure that i will see you next week